I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I want to help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. I was walking down the street. I was disappointed to hear this. There was a mom, and I think about an eight year old boy there walking. I was walking faster. So as I passed them, I heard them talking about a video game. And the, the boy, I could hear him talking about the game, and he was like all excited. He said, Mom, last night I killed 100,000 people in the game. And I'm thinking, You mean he's practiced 100,000 times? I mean, do you understand what he just said? He is being desensitized to the value of human life over and over and over and over again. Listen, Satan has a tactic, friend. He has a scheme to desensitize you to sin. And it'll take you out. You've got to understand, you've got to make some boundaries. You've got to make some decisions based on what God says how life is to be lived. If you're going to have the good life. So, again, I'm just giving you some examples of we have responsibility. I hope that's okay. All right. Or how about Psalms 14.1? The fool says in his heart, there's no God. So who's raising your kids? A lot of people just send them off to school. They don't know who's raising the kids. They don't know what they believe. They don't even know what they're being taught. If they don't know God and they're teaching humanism, I'm sorry, there's a lot of great teachers in the, in the system, but I'm just saying that you need to know who is teaching your child and what they're learning. You're their parent. Or how about this one? Proverbs chapter 24, verse 30, I went past the field of a sluggard, past the vineyard of someone who has no sense. That'll stick. Think about that. Has no sense. Thorns had come up everywhere. The ground was covered with weeds and the stone wall was in ruins. I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcely like an armed man. Where does a child learn to work at, friend? At home. We used to call them chores, right? Clean your room, make your bed, you know, they have a whole list, go out and do the yard. You know, we did it before they had the weed eater. We had did clippers. Anyone remember those? You go clip around all the rocks and you did it by hand. Some of these young people are going, you are kidding me. Yeah, it takes a, yeah, it takes a long time. Just clip, clip, clip. You know, my dad, every Saturday, it was, it was yard day, man, out there clipping and, you know, mowing and all that stuff. We had chores to do. And if we didn't do the chores, we didn't want to find out what would happen if we didn't do the chores. You know, you got to train your children. You got to train them to responsibility. Here's the bottom line, Luke chapter 6, verse 40. A student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be just like their teacher. So whoever's training your child, you can look at them and see what your child's going to look like. So, well, I don't know my child was raised in church. How this, well, we need to identify you have some responsibility. And so it is in life, in church life, in God life. I mean, you have things you have to do. There's things you're responsible for, and you need to know how that works. The word personal responsibility is really popular nowadays, isn't it? Personal responsibility is not really politically correct, is it? You know, interesting, again, there's no condemnation in Christ. So as I tell you these things, you may find yourself in one of the situations. This is a brand new day, friend. Just make a decision that you're going to make some changes, that's all. There's no condemnation. God's just trying to spare you some hard times, that's all. He's trying to help you, that's it. I was at a big conference, probably 5,000 or so people at, at the conference, and they had a, a pastor says, oh, I believe the Lord wants to uh, heal people's knees, their knees. So about 100 people walked up front, and that's fine. That's great. Healing, man, healing's awesome. But as they walked up front, I noticed that almost all of them, not all of them, almost all of them were very overweight. You know, if you carry a lot of weight around your knees, it's hard on your knees. You know that. Now, again, I'm getting personal Okay, I know that. I don't mean to, you know, make anyone feel uncomfortable. But let me ask you a question. Do you think the Holy Spirit tried to deal with that person months or years before that 
about their discipline? Do you think that this caught them by surprise or do you think the Holy Spirit was trying to reach them and trying to help them? Obviously. So the point is, I'd like to avoid having bad knees. You know, I really don't want bad knees. So I have my part to play. Now, here's the thing. If you ate 2,000 Twinkies a day and you messed your body up and you repented from it and you came to Christ, he'd heal you. He, the healing covenant's yours. But why go through all the misery and the problems when you don't have to? You follow me? You don't have to. So we have our part to play in this thing that we can walk in freedom. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says this, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you receive from God, you're not your own. Say that, I'm not my own. No, you've been purchased with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. You have things you honor today. You have jewelry, you have things you put on the shelf, you polish, things you have set high so people can't touch them, little kids. You're protecting them, right? You honor things, or you wax your car, you honor it. But you need to honor your body because God needs your body. See, you're the hands and feet of Christ. Satan hates your body. That's why infirmity is so rampant in the earth because he's trying to stop God from moving in the earth realm. And the way he does that, he's got to stop your body. If he can slow or stop your body, he's got you. He's made you ineffective. And so he has a plot and a plan to bring destruction to your body. You know, I don't know what all those chemicals mean on those boxes of cereal, you know. I don't know. But I can almost pretty much guess he has a tactic to take you out with a scheme that's hidden among a lot of different areas. We need to be wise. That's all I'm saying. We have responsibility to know what we're putting in our body. We have responsibility to do it like God says. We have an instruction book. He gave us a book. We don't have to guess. He's given us a book of life. This whole book is about how to live life and how to live life with him. And we need to understand that it's for us. He's not against us. He's trying to help us. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22 and 23 says, It is of It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. They, his mercies, are new every morning. How many thank God for that? Yes. We thank God his mercies are new every morning. We all make a lot of mistakes. We're all growing and learning. That's fine. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy And pleasing to God, this is your spiritual, say spiritual, Spiritual. act of worship. You mean, Pastor, how I handle my body is spiritual? That's what the Bible says. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. The temple of God's Spirit, he holds very holy and very valuable. And he asks us to honor it, right? Honor our bodies. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll do what I say, right? So the other side of faith is we have responsibility over our lives. Now, God's with us. He's helping us. There's no condemnation. He's given us his word. But we are responsible to apply the word. We're responsible to dig into the word. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. It means learn how his kingdom operates. Righteousness means learn what he says is right. Learn what he says, how life should be lived. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. But you're responsible to understand, to seek, and to find out how it operates. One hour on Sunday morning, friends, not going not to do it. You've got to dig into the Word of God. So what I'm saying is, if you want to please God, you're going to have to evaluate what you're doing. Is this, is this pleasing to God or not? I want to please God. My heart is to please God. My heart is to find out what pleases Him. And so I want to know what pleases Him so I can reject what doesn't, so I can be offended at what He calls offensive, and I can embrace what he says is righteousness because he cares for me, he loves me, he wants the best for me, and I know whatever he says is for my best. And I want to find out what it says, right? So that's what we need to do. We basically just need to decide, for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And how do we do that? We're going to find out what he says. (laughs) We're going to find out how, how do I live this thing? You know, how do I live life? God, show me in your book. I mean, tell, teach me what's right. You know, help me make decisions. Help me learn what you embrace. I think that'd help us. So again, what'd you learn today? That we have responsibility. 
We have a responsibility to find out what pleases God. We have a responsibility to follow his instructions. We have a choice. We don't have to. But if we don't follow his instructions, we're going to stay where we're at until we learn. Then we can move on once we learn. I assume you'd prefer to be promoted and have the benefits of that and the good things and God, what he wants to get to you. And so if you do, we got to pass the test. We got to, and there's no condemnation. So let me say this in, in closing. You know, like I said, if you ate 25,000 Twinkies a day and you repented from that, God would heal your body. Or, you know, if you're on your fifth divorce and you were abusive and God will heal, heal the marriage you're in. I mean, he, from today forward, there's no condemnation. You can move forward in God and he'll help you where you're at, fix where you're at, so you can be accomplishing what he says for your life. There's no condemnation. But what I want to see as your pastor, I want to see you embrace, embrace his heart. I want to see you love what he loves and hate what he hates. Because the world has embraced a bunch of stuff they call good, and the Bible says it's perverse. And I want you to embrace what is right so you can have everything God has for you, and it's amazing. The life he has for you is amazing, and I don't want you to be harmed. I don't want you, the enemy to take you down a trail of disgust and discouragement and dysfunction. I want you to learn up front what God says. Amen?